together Psalm 25, verse 15. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only He will release my feet from the snare. See, my eyes are always in the Lord. See, when our eyes would be focused on the Lord, friends, we don't stare blankly at the Lord. We look at Him in faith, in expectations. And that's what David was saying here. My eyes are always on the Lord. Because he found himself in a bend. And so he said that, that for only he will release my feet from the snare, from the trap of the wicked one. And then one, uh, Psalm 141, verse 1, we are also told here. He said that, O oh Lord, I call to you, come quickly to me. Hear my voice when I call to you. So again, friends, let us focus our eyes because he only can answer our, our prayers. Well, many times, friends, we focus our eyes on people. But what can they do to us when they themselves are struggling in their own lives? So why can we not just focus our eyes on the Lord, fix our eyes on him, and trust in him? And so... When we do that, what kind of an attitude do we have towards the Lord? Say, when we look at Him, well, friends, we are told that we get to have a three attitude when we look at the Lord. See, we should have the eyes that He may open the eyes of our understanding. Let us believe, friends, that He is able to open the eyes of our understanding. Because many times we are, we are told, friends, that People perish for lack of knowledge. So in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, we are now told for the Lord to open our eyes, he said, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and in his Com, uh, incomparably great power for us who believe. So may the Lord open the eyes of our heart or the eyes of our understanding that we may come to know his plans, his purposes, and his will for us. Friends, you could read the whole scripture. If the Lord will not open your eyes, well, you will not know what his will and his plans for you. Because for you to be open in your eyes, you got to have a relationship with him. You got to be born again. You know why? Well, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Without the spirit of God in you, you will never discern. You will never understand. Amen? See, how long did the disciples spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ, you think? How long? Well, we are told, friends, that he had three years ministry. And his disciples had been with him all those times. And yet when Jesus died and he rose again, how did the disciples understand what happened to him? Did they truly understand? So in, in Luke chapter 24, when the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and now he was walking with them in the road to Emmaus, so those two disciples were wondering how come this guy that they were walking with did not understand what happened in Jerusalem? Because in Jerusalem, someone died. Someone was crucified. And yet they were saying that he rose again from the dead. They were wondering. And so now we are told, friends, that the Lord Jesus Christ started to tell them about the scripture. And their hearts were burning. And yet they did not understand it. But in Luke chapter 24, verse 45, now we are told. Then we are told here. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Unless the Lord opened your mind, you cannot understand the scripture. Amen. That's why a lot of people are lost. Even to this day, friends, they are wondering what the Lord's will is for them. 
because they've been reading scripture but never understanding because that's what the Lord said to Isaiah they will ever be hearing but never understanding they will ever be seeing but never perceiving so friends let us not be those that will listen and hear the word but never understanding it well that happened to David King David some uh, some uh, uh, 73 you know, when he was looking around and said, that, how come these wicked people are prospering? How come these people so wicked, they are so healthy? And here I am, here the people of God, they are suffering. And he envied them. Never understood, friends, he never understood what was happening around him. And then we are told, then he entered into the sanctuary of God. When you enter into the sanctuary of God, then you look unto God, friends. And the Lord will open the eyes of your understanding. And then we are told, friends, that then he understood their final destiny. That they are standing on slippery ground. So, friends, again, all these scriptures have been telling us that we get to focus our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Focus your eyes on the Lord. He alone could open the eyes that we have, the two eyes, the eyes of understanding. This eye, friends, it can be very deceiving because you can look at someone just staring at someone. They believe that you are actually looking at them, but no, blankly you look at people. And how many times you do that to the Lord when we come to God and say, Lord, and yet we could not see anything because we operate by the eyes. Then the second one is that, you know, that the Lord may give us the eye of faith. That the Lord may give us the eyes of faith. That we can see things through the eyes of faith. Amen. Do you have faith in God? Well, friends, if we have faith in the Lord, then we are able to look at the eyes, or through the eyes of faith. Because again, friends, in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we are told that walk by faith and not by sight. That we look at things, friends, not the earthly things, because earthly things will pass away. But we look at the heavenly things, because it is the heavenly things that will never pass away. So let's ask the Lord, Lord, there is a problem. I am in trouble today. Give me the eyes of faith that I may see through this problem through the eyes of faith. Because many times, friends, we look and focus our eyes on something else. On what do you focus your eyes on? On the problem rather than on the solution. See, there's a storm in Florida. The eyes of the storm, Florida, and then another one coming, Jose. Irma, Jose, and what else, the other one? Harvey. They said, friends, someone in the radio had been saying that, you know, we have never seen something like this before. We have never seen something like this before. And that guy was 94 years old. And his name is Harvey. And the wife said that, yes, husband and wife, we have never seen something, anything like this before. And that woman is 92 years old. And the name is Irma. <laughs> the, wo the man's name was Harvey. The woman's name is Irma. They had never experienced it, but they are not experiencing the fury of a storm. And there is another one coming after, Jose. And they said that they were fighting, and Jose, because Jose was chasing after them. Anyway, that's just a joke. <laughs> but that, the Jose thing, the, the Jose part is a joke. But the Harvey and Irma is real. It's a real husband and wife. Amen. And so, friends, where do you focus your eyes? The eye of the storm? And you are terrified? And you don't know what to do? And you are so helpless and hopeless, and you are actually immobile. You cannot move because of the fear. And how many times, friends, do we focus our eyes on the eye of the problem that we have? 
We focus on a problem and we are terrified and we cannot do anything about it. What should you do? What should you do? Run? Where will you go? For safety. There are two doors. Which door will you open? The one is so familiar, you see it every day. A door to the washroom, so familiar. But there's another door beside, the exit door. Which door will you enter? And how many times did we hear stories, friends, that there was a fire, and this woman went to the washroom rather than went to the exit door? Because it's so familiar. And many times we do the same thing. We want to exit from our problem, and we go to the things that are so familiar to us, and yet will never help us, and yet there is that exit door where the Lord that will open unto you, where you can go and run and find safety in Him. But how often, friends, do we do that? Because we get confused, because we are not using the eyes of faith. We are just looking through these eyes, physical eyes, and we assess everything through these physical eyes, but we are told to walk by faith and not by sight. Remember Elisha with his servant in 2 Kings chapter, chapter 6. There is this army that came to capture him. This army surrounded them. And the eyes of the servant saw everything. He said, my father... We are surrounded, so many armies around us. He was so fearful. So he was so helpless because how can we survive? But you know what Elijah said? Well, Lord opened his eyes. And the Lord opened the eye of faith of the servant of Elijah. And when he looked up, you know what he saw? He saw the great armies of the living God. Armies of the living God, he saw. Which he cannot see through his naked eye. His naked eye can, can only see the armies of Aram. But his eyes of faith, he saw the armies of the living God. Friends, for us to survive in a wicked and perverse generation the way that we are living here today, we need the eyes of faith. Amen. Don't be moved. Do you have God with you? If you believe that God is with you, should, we be, should you be moved by circumstances in life? Should you be moved? Friends, don't be moved. Because we have a greater God. Amen. And then there's another kind of, uh, of eyes that we can see, use. And that the eyes of a servant. The eyes of a servant. In Psalm 123, verse 2. Let's see how we should uh, respond to difficulties in life. Psalm 123, verse 2. Let's read from verse 1. I lift my eyes to you, to you whose throne is in heaven. As the eyes of slaves look to the hands of their master, as the eyes of a maid look to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. See, the, the eyes of a servant focus, fix on the Lord until he will show them his mercy. So until you receive what you are asking, friends, keep looking unto the Lord. Fix your eyes on the Lord. Don't give up. Amen. Stare at him. Fix your eyes on him until he delivers. Just like the eyes of a slave. A slave, well, they're just waiting for a cue, signal from the master. And how about us? 
Do we look for those signals from the Lord? When we are praying, are we praying blankly? Well, as if uh, we are not expecting anything. It's just a process. It's just a motion. When we pray, do we pray the prayer of faith? An expectant to bless us. Just like this lady. Expectant until they are shown mercy. Well, a lot of us sometimes... When we pray, we just go through the motion. Just be able to pray. As I said last time, when we pray, friends, let's touch the heart of God to our prayers. It's just a matter of just blurting out whatever you want and saying, oh, the Lord knows now. And say, okay, Lord, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Friends, express your heart to the Lord. And when you do, expect. Expect to bless you. Again, remember Peter. When he was in prison, how did the, the, home, or the home church respond to Peter being sent to jail? He was in prison. And they have intercessory prayers. They were praying, Lord, release Peter, Lord, release him. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. He's in prison. He is the next one. They killed James before. Now he is next. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Friends, God heard their cry. God heard their prayers. And God answered the prayers and released Peter. Now, what happened to the church? Did they believe that God can do wonders? Friends, those times when you were in prison, nobody can save you from prison. No. Nobody can rescue you out of prison. No. At those times, no. You should see the guards but the Lord is able. Amen. The Lord is able. And he released Peter from prison. Miraculously. You have never heard, friends. This time, every time that you walk through those doors, wow. You have sensor opening. Right? Where did they get that idea of opening doors without you opening it yourself? Where did they get it, that idea? From the story of Peter. When the Lord delivered Peter out of the prison house, he walked through the doors of the prison house, opening by itself. No one was opening it. Those doors were opened by themselves. It's like, it was like a, a sensor door. And so Peter was able to go out of the prison house, straight to the prayer meeting. And where the prayer was, was happening, he was knocking at the door. And this girl, Rhoda, opened the, heard the message. Hey, open the door. Hmm, who's that? Peter? Peter was in jail. But it's Peter's voice. And he ran back and told those that were praying, Peter was at the door. And you know what they said? You're crazy. You're crazy. Peter's in jail. Did not believe. No, it was Peter. Listen again. Hey, come on, open the door. Oh, it's Peter. Do you know my voice? See, they recognize Peter. Yeah, it's Peter. I said, hey, Peter is the door. No, you're crazy. That is his ghost. It's not Peter. But friends, Eventually, when they opened the door, Peter was there. So when the Lord told you and answered your prayers, how did you respond? Did you open the door? Or you say, oh, it's impossible. You apply for a job. It's too much for you. You're not qualified. And they call you, call you, come on, report. Me? Maybe. Maybe they had the wrong number. And you don't even want to respond because you believe that you are not qualified. Did you ever try to open the door and say, yeah, I'm here. Friends, go through that door. Have that faith to believe. 
Keep praying, keep asking until the Lord opens the door for you. And when he opens, have the faith to open it. Amen. Have the faith to open it. Don't just be praying, friends, in vain. Because someone asks you to pray, okay, let's pray. You don't even mean it. You don't even believe that it will happen. Believe that it will happen and it will happen. Amen? Amen. That's why the, 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 the Samuel, or David said that, you know, Lord, my eyes will ever be on you. That's why in Hebrews chapter 2, at chapter 12, verse 2, we are told that fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, is calling his name, now seated at the right hand of God. See, there was the joy before him. And to us, friends, we believe that there are promises. So may the Lord open the eyes of our understanding that we may understand the promises of God set before us. We can fix our eyes on those promises. There will be challenges, but God will give us the eyes of faith to overcome all those challenges. And friends, we shall stop until we receive. Amen. Because God had given us the faith or the eyes of a servant. We shall not give up. We shall keep trusting. We shall keep calling. And God in the end, friends, he will bless. He will bless. And we will never experience this until we believe. Until we believe. Amen. In James 1, Verse 25, he said, But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do so, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Friends, look intently into all the promises of the Lord. Look intently into the word. Fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, friends, he said that then you will have your freedom. And if you continue to do so, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. So let us desire to be blessed, friends. Let us desire to be blessed. God is faithful. And he who said all these words will surely make it happen if we have faith. Let's stand up. Let's pray.